Hey guys, what's up? Noah McGee from InsideHilltopperSports.com. Uh, obviously, if you guys are watching this, you just read my film breakdown on it from uh, MTSU for this weekend. And I wanted to take you guys through uh, some of the uh, running game concepts that uh, the Tops might see this weekend from the Blue Raiders. So uh, the first thing I have up here is a guard, ta guard tackle counter zone read. So basically what that is, is uh, you'll see Oklahoma do this a lot, where whenever they run options or just counters in general, the first thing they're gonna do, if with Western as a four-man front, they're gonna take this guard, depending on where the back is, and they're gonna pull him outside. And then these, uh, these linemen are going to slant down and pick up these unblocked defenders. And then this tackle is also going to pull right behind this guard. So with that being said, this back here, which will probably be J.B. McDonald, the guy who had 76 yards on seven carries last Friday against UTSA for the Raiders, is going to either meet is going to meet O'Hara here at the mesh point to either receive the ball and go and follow the guard and the tackle. But more likely than not, O'Hara with his athleticism is going to end up playing one-on-one -on -one right out here with this end, who will probably end up being D'Angelo Malone. So with that being said, we we'll move on to the other zone read, which is just your basic read option type look, where it's going to be zone blocking down to whatever side the back's going to. So in this case, when you see it on tape against Troy, they go to the left. So all guards tackles in the center down block to the left side of the field. And then it ends up being a fake of a handoff to J.B. McDonald. And then O'Hara ends up pulling it and having a one-on-one -on -one with the defensive end and ends up scoring. So look for this a lot on Saturday, O'Hara keeping the ball on the zone read looks. So MTSU has really struggled throwing the ball these last three games. Uh, it got better last Friday against UTSA, but that's just because they simplified it. So before we talk about how they simplified the passing game for Asher O'Hara, the one thing that they did in the Army game is they tried to take some shots downfield, particularly in the second quarter when they fell behind 14-0. So right here, what MTSU did is they went pistol with O'Hara back here. Then they put two receivers out to the left with a single receiver to the right near side towards O'Hara. And so what they called was basically a shot play is a double post against cover three. And uh, O'Hara, as I've written about, doesn't throw the deep ball very well. So what happened here is this receiver ended up being motioned across the line of scrimmage to the outside spot and turning this guy into the inside receiver and ended up being two ended up being a double post call against cover three. And with that being said, O'Hara was a guy at that point was kind of like, you know, we got to take this shot downfield, but he doesn't have the arm strength nor the mechanics to help complete that throw. So he actually ends up throwing an interception that was negated by penalty. So uh, shot plays like this where you have two receivers running double posts against zone coverage, especially when it's whatever you have a defender here and then a defender here kind of bracketing this guy and then you have the safety over top taking away the the further post on the outside you won't see things like that from MTSU on Saturday so in the next in the next part of the segment I'll show you guys how MTSU has simplified the passing game to make things easier get O'Hara some easier completions over the middle of the field so I told you guys that MTSU and Rick Stockstill have really simplified the passing game and made the reads easier for Asher O'Hara uh, playing within his strengths instead of making him try to make tough throws down the field that he's not very good at making. So uh, what they've implemented is uh, one of my favorite passing game concepts, the drive concept. And I'll just take you guys from left to right and what that looks like. So on the left side of the formation, you have your, uh, you have your X receiver and all he's gonna run here is an alert route. So typically if it's against man-to-man -man coverage, you'll see the corner matching up on him. And if O'Hara can check at the line if it's man-to-man, -man, he'll see if he, likes the shot. if he likes to take the shot downfield, then he can do it. But more likely than not, this is just to clear out space for what's going to happen over here. So with that being said, the other outside receiver is also running, the marker almost down on me there, uh, running another alert route just to fly a fly route down the field. So in the same case that if O'Hara likes his matchup over here, he can take a shot over here. But where the drive concept comes into play, typically this first inside receiver ends up being the guy that runs a drag, but he's actually going to come up and run an in route right here in the middle of the field. And then the slot receiver will run a drag, which is where the drive concept comes in. So with that being said, the running back here ends up becoming the check down option. And so the way that O'Hara is supposed to read this is one, two, three. It's like the tri they call it a triangle read. So the drag will be his first read. The end will be his second and the check down will be his third. And so with that being said, 
it creates a triangle read right there in the middle of the field. So if they're playing as man-to-man -man coverage, both of these guys are going to continue running across the field to see if they can create some space and get open. But if it's against zone coverage, these guys can sit down and actually almost make a triangle, and then Alvaro can choose which soft spot that he wants to throw into. So that's just one of the ways the MTSU has simplified their passing game over the last couple of weeks. So the final thing the MTSU has been doing to especially help out in second and third and long situations is they, they like to spread people out. And what they have been doing is basically just been going four verticals down the field and letting O'Hara choose you know, which matchup he likes best or letting him, if, the, if it's against man-to-man -man coverage, let the field clear out, let him take on whoever's in the middle of the field one-on-one -on -one with his legs. But an effective way that they've started to pick up some more yardage in terms of these second and third long situations is um, basically by using a screen pass. And so what they'll do is they'll put two receivers into the boundary, the boundary being the shorter side of the field, depending on where the ball is in between the hashes, and then putting two receivers to the field side with the back on that side as well. So with that being said, as soon as the ball is snapped in, this, in these situations, these receivers that I've drawn arrows for, for go routes, go. But this guy right here, the near side receiver to the back, has been coming out and it's basically like a pulling blocker and it's just looking for the first guy in space that he can put his helmet on so that he can clear it out for whenever O'Hara dumps it to the back for this swing pass and then that way they can just get an easy completion pick up some yardage if they're on you know if they're in scoring territory so they have a chance to kick a field goal or maybe bust a big play with the back's ability to make guys to make guys miss in space so uh yeah that's just some of the things I noticed this week on Phil from watching MTSU uh, 100 miles of hate, obviously. Western wins this week. They tie the series up all time, I believe. So uh, somebody's got to pick up their first W this week. Uh, this has been Noah McGee from InsideHilltoppersports.com with you guys on the whiteboard. See you guys next week.